Want to rest, Lily? Why? Table too heavy for you? No. At least it's dry. It wouldn't be much fun selling tickets in the rain. You sure you're okay to cover for me while I'm taking people round? It'd be a pleasure. What? Say it. Why are you bothering with this table? Why not get people to buy your tickets at the gate when they pay to come in? I want the personal touch, Lily. I want the punters to really get how special this is. Yeah, most of the stuff I'll be showing them has only ever been seen before by the family. But how amazing is that? Pretty amazing, I suppose. Actually, do you mind if we just put it down for a minute? Oh. Uh, oh, it's not so much heavy, it's just awkward. If you say so. <laughs> so, Ooh. how many people are you hoping to get? Uh, hopefully everyone who buys a ticket for the main house. I'm only charging 15 quid. It's a bargain for what they're getting. Attics, backstage at the Toy Museum, Uncle Cedric's folly, they can see the view from the tower, Grandma Julia's bathroom... Uh, does Mum know you're taking them there? It was her idea. Pure 1920s, hidden Lower Loxley. Well, sounds good to me. Good luck. Yeah. If it's a success, I'm thinking of running it every Sunday through the summer. Really? Oh, it's going to be great, showing all the nooks and crannies. And if I can add even a tiny bit to the Lower Loxley coffers, what's not to like? Oh, come on. I didn't say anything. Lily? It's just... I'm really impressed, Freddie, with the idea and your enthusiasm. But please don't be disappointed if... It's all a bit last minute. I've put up advertising round the villages. I've put an ad in the Echo. I've done my social media. Yeah. I've done my thinking, sis. Sure. Even if I only make a couple of hundred quid, it'll boost the petty cash tin. Right. Do you think there's some at Williams not telling us? Why? Well, I only saw me a Friday. The last thing she said to me was see you Sunday. And William don't seem himself to me. I think you might be reading too much into it. Oh, Emma... I thought they'd sorted themselves out. If you didn't have something to worry about, you'd worry about that. That's true. Are you cold? Not so much cold, but it is a bit fresh. Here, borrow my car, dear. Oh, no, I couldn't. Yeah, think of it as a birthday loan. Well, if you're sure. I am. Could ask the kids to move your brunch inside, if you like. Oh, no, I wouldn't dream of it. Not after they set the table out here and everything. Any idea what they're cooking? Yeah. What? I'm not selling. It's all part of the birthday surprise. Oh, I'm being spoiled <laughs> rotten. Brunch first, and then Eddie taking us all to Lower Loxley. I know, it's great, isn't it? Cream tea in a stately home. <laughs> Get me. <laughs> I don't know how he persuaded Elizabeth to let us in for nothing. Well, he can be very persuasive sometimes. And he's paying for the tea. True enough. So what was that I was hearing earlier with Edward telling you to get your scrapbook out? Mm. He wants us to go to Felpersham this week. We're going to look at a beautiful table that we found. I cannot wait. Felpersham? Yeah. Tim called him this morning. He's got another big job for him on Tuesday. Because of the short notice, he's paying over the odds. Did Edward tell me he had a shearing job on Tuesday? Yeah, him and Jazza. They'll have to make another time, though. With the money Tim's offering, it's a no-brainer. Hello, love. Ah, I've been sent out to ask if you want coffee or tea. Tea for me, please. Uh, Emma? Oh, coffee, please, Will. One coffee, one tea coming up. William? Yeah? Any words yet from Mia? No. Should I give her a quick ring, do you no. think? No. Well, it seems such a shame she's not here. I'm sorry, Mum. It's funny she didn't mention it when I saw her Friday. I probably forgot. She'll be in touch soon enough. Freddy, I hope I'm not late. Why are you here? Oh, well, they're a waitress down in the orangery, so Lily's helping there, and I've come to cover for her here. She shouldn't have asked you. She didn't. I offered. How's it going? Well... Oh, Uncle Kenton just phoned. He was planning to drop by in person to wish you luck, but apparently Jolene's suddenly gone off to have some publicity shots done, and he says it wouldn't be fair to leave Oliver on his own behind the bar. Anyway, he sends his love and says he can't wait to hear how your tours are going. OK. So, how are they going? Well, no one turned up for the 11 o'clock. No one? Or the 12 o'clock. Oh, Freddie. And I'm about to cancel the 1 o'clock so you can get back to your lunch. 
Well, give it time, darling. It's still early. Do you think I'm charging too much? I don't know, Freddy. Pricing's more of an art than a science. If I could just get one family or something, they could spread the word. It's a lovely idea, but... but once they've seen the hidden places, it's such an amazing house, Mum. You sure you're not too hot in that coat? Oh, it ain't going to be warm in Joe's trap. Ah, well, you can come with the rest of us in Dad's van if you like. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I'm looking forward to arriving at Lower Loxley in style. How's the washing up going inside? Well, nearly there. Yeah. I think the kids must have used every pan in your kitchen. It was very nice, though, the brunch. What did you think to the smash avocado? Yeah, it was interesting. Mm, sausages? Oh, they was gorgeous, but I liked all of it. Yeah. Happy birthday, Mum. Thank you, darling. I'm so sorry Mia and Jake aren't here with us. Yeah. You sure everything's all right? Yeah. You can be honest with me, love. Yeah. Well, truth is, uh, we had a bit of a row on Friday, me and Mia. I wondered if it might be something like that. What did you argue about? Oh, same as usual, something and nothing. But we both thought it'd be a good idea if she went off to Andrews for the weekend. Give us both a bit of breathing space. I see. She'll be back tonight. Good. Or maybe tomorrow. You don't know which? The main thing is, Mum, it's nothing for you to fret over. Ah, look, here's Grandad now. You and me are going to be all right. Ain't you? Of course we are. Now come on, my lady. Let's get you into your carriage. He's really not had a single customer all day. No, I wish he had. I'm not surprised. He's talking about dropping the entrance fee for the final tour. Do you think that'll work? Oh, really, I do hope so. <laughs> Look at Clary. The smile on her face. The family have been making a real fuss of her. She told me she felt like a queen. <laughs> well, if anyone deserves a bit of a fuss, it's her. Actually, Lily, I've had an idea. Clary, happy birthday. Oh, Elizabeth. Oh, we're having a lovely time. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. And the grounds are gorgeous. We've had a little walk round before our tea. It's a very beautiful time of year. They see an oath that says, I've never seen a blue so deep. And as for the old rhododendron, oh, the size of they blooms. Well, I'm glad you're having a nice time. I'm having a wonderful time. Best birthday ever. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind the number being a bit lower. <laughs> now, I was just wondering, have you heard that Freddie's offering a special hidden Lower Loxley tour? Yes, the kiddies notice that when we come in. Oh, it's for one day only. Is that right? Yeah. Would you and the family like to go round as my birthday present? Oh, Elizabeth, you've been so generous already. What with letting us in here? Clary, but... we're all waiting for you. Sorry, Emma, love. I got a bit carried away with the beautiful flowers. <laughs> don't you want to open your presents? Presents as well. Oh, don't go all bashful. Will you excuse me, Elizabeth? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks again. You saved me just in the nick of time, Emma. Did I? Things were starting to get a bit awkward. Elizabeth wanted us to do Freddy's tour. Oh, we could never afford his prices. Oh, I think she was offering it to us for nothing. Huh. But everyone knows what Freddy did, don't they? I don't want George and Kira anywhere near him. Hi. Oh, don't turn it off for me. No, I'm, I'm not really listening. Can I come in? Sure. What are you reading? Something I found when I was clearing up the attics. We need the poo. <laughs> yeah, it's the same copy Dad read to us when we were little. He loved that book. His eel used to crack me up. His tigger always got to me. Yeah, I can hear his voice reading it. OK, if I sit down? Sure. There's some pizza in the kitchen if you're interested. I'm not hungry, thanks. Well, you ought to have something. No, I'm fine. Well, if you change your mind. Yeah. 
Thank you. I'm... I'm really sorry, Mum. Sorry? About today. <laughs> oh, Freddy. Some we win, some we lose. And some are a complete disaster. Don't say that. I didn't get a single customer. Well, that's not your fault. How isn't it my fault? You did everything right, darling. Did I? Yes. You had your planning in place, you'd done your press advertising, your social media, you'd posted all around. More than I could manage at the moment. Have you seen the Facebook page? Uh, no. Oh, no, Freddy. Under the blurb for my tour. Mm. Take a look. Oh, that's horrible. Is little Lord Fauntleroy developing a sideline to fund his drug habit? <sighs> Take no notice. Some people can be so mean. Mum, that isn't going to make it go away. It's just one person. One unkind, nasty, anonymous person who needs to get a life. <sighs> come on, come here, darling. I honestly thought it would work, Mum. So did I. I should have given it more time, shouldn't I? Oh, possibly. How do we learn, hmm? If not from our mistakes. I know I've made some huge blunders. No, you haven't. <laughs> yes. Well, for starters, we'd still have Geraldine here if I... Anyway, it's water under the bridge. The thing is, Freddy, you gave it a go. You've taken your first step into the family business. Yeah, and failed. You've tried. That's what counts. You've made a start. Next time, things will go better. Yeah, if there is a next time. Well, there better be, young man, or you'll have your mother to answer to. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. You're not to look back, OK? You'll learn from today and move forward. Onward and upward. <sighs> Say it. OK. <laughs> Onward and upward. Ed! Good uh, morning. Come on in, have a coffee. Uh, no, I won't, thanks. I've got to get on. Uh, I just wanted a quick word with Jazza. Oh, you'll probably have to prize him from his breakfast. <laughs> well, I could hear you, pal. How are you, Dan? Yeah, yeah, not bad. A uh, bit busy. He says he's too busy for a coffee. Oh, I must have my days rang. I thought we were here in the morrow. The hobby farm, the coal fields, isn't it? He remembers everything I tell him. He'd be amazed, Dad. The thing is, uh, the shearing. That's uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, definitely Tuesday, Jazza. That's mm. what you told me. Yeah, well, um, it's off. Ah, what, the cancelled? Uh, no, not cancelled. Um, I postponed it. Why? Something's come up with Tim. A, a job. Uh, if you will excuse me, gentlemen, I hear the call of the coffee. Well, I couldn't put him off, Jazz. He, he, he says it's got to be tomorrow. I took the morning morning after tea room especially. <sighs> Sorry about that. So, when are we doing it instead? Well, I'm not sure yet. I, I could only get Mrs Coldfield's voicemail, so um, I left a message and said we'd be in touch. You didn't have to put it off. I could have got a catch and done the job in my own. <sighs> Damn, I'm sorry. I didn't even think of that. It's Tim, he's making you forget who your mates are. I've got to keep him sweet, Jazz. How about keeping me sweet? No, I'm really sorry, mate. I've got to go. They're expecting me at home farm. Uh, get you. All that work. I need every penny, Ed. I'm at your job and you know that. Well, you wouldn't be out of a job, would you, if you hadn't walked out of Bridge Farm? Watch what you're saying. I was constructively <sighs> dismissed. OK, I'm sorry I called Mrs Colfield before I spoke to you. But you know what? If you really want to do the job on your own, why don't you call her yourself? I might just do that. Did Tom speak to you? Not so much speak as grunt. Same as when I saw him out in the yard. Do you think he's heard from Natasha? Well, if he has, I'd say it's not good news. Uh, right. I think that's enough pasta. Pass me the box of rice, will you? All right. Oh, d did you hear about the cricket yesterday? No. Johnny was just telling me. Y you know how he persuaded Tom to go and play because he thought it might take his mind off things. So what happened? Tracy Horribin had a go at him. Why? 
Why? <laughs> Apparently he dropped an easy catch and she shouted out in front of everyone if he took his eye off the ball at home like he did on the field, she wasn't surprised that Natasha had done a runner. How does she know? Susan, I imagine. Oh. Yeah. Poor Tom. I wish I could make him feel better. The only thing that'll make him feel better is Natasha coming home. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, hi, Clary. OK, to put these yoghurts in the chiller? Oh, yes, of course. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'd better be off. Bye, all. Uh, Bye. See you later. Bye, Tony. So, how was your birthday? You went to Lower Loxley, didn't you? Yeah, well, the tea was delicious. But it was a bit embarrassing, actually. Oh? Did you know Freddie was running a special tour hidden Lower Loxley? Yeah, I thought it sounded quite interesting. I don't think the paying public agreed with you. <laughs> Not a lot of takers? None that I could see. <laughs> but, but you had a good day. Yeah. You don't sound very sure. It's just... Mia wasn't there. And William said they'd had a bit of an argy-bargy. Oh, he looked that sad. And that made me feel... Oh, I don't know, Pat. Oh, I do say we mothers are only ever as happy as our unhappiest child. Mm -hmm. You worrying about Tom? Yeah. What are we like? You, me and our grown-up children, eh? Well, I'm not sure they ever grow up. Not really. Not to us mums. Constructive dismissal cases can be extremely hard to prove, Jazza. Nah, Jim, no, you at the controls. I'm not a lawyer. Ah, but you've got a brain bigger than Leaky Hill. If that's an attempt to flatter me. I don't dare flatter you, Jim. I just deal in hard facts. You'd have to prove that Bridge Farm committed a serious breach of your contract with them. And, as a direct consequence of the change in your conditions of employment, you felt forced to leave. Aye, and that's what happened. How do you work all this out? Well... I might have been doing a little light research. Ah, oh, Jim. You help me, this will be nothing more than a walk in the park. I will admit that convoluted and labyrinthine as employment law might be, it is as nothing compared with navigating a career through the internal politics of the senior common room. <laughs> what does that even mean? Oh, how brilliant. It's a wee hobby farm returning my call. Mr Jack McCreary speaking. How may I be of assistance? I reckon you've got more money than sin. Give them that stuff when there's all this lovely grass going for free. Uh, nothing's too good for my taxels. Ah, uh, the good fresh spring pasture. Better than anything on earth. This tin fella must be paying you too much. Only what I'm worth. Yeah. Got you his beck and call, hasn't he? He says jump, you says hey why. He's the boss, Grandad. Oh, look who's here. Afternoon, Jazza McCreary. Yo, Ed. Jazza? Oh, is this a social call, is it? No, Joe. Strictly business. I'm here to talk to Ed about the shearing job. All right. I phoned her, Ed, like you said. Told her I could see her sheep tomorrow morning as planned. Oh, good. Well, it would have been if she hadn't gave the job to a more reliable team of shearers. Oh, what, Jazza? I'm... So we lost the job. Maybe forever. I realise it doesn't matter to you with all your alternative sources of income, but it matters to me. Look, I'm sorry. The trouble with sorry is I can't wrap it up never from my tea. Yeah, true, though. I'll make it up to you. How? I'm not sure, but I'm... I'm... OK. How about asking this new pal of yours, Tim, if he's got any work to offer me? You can tell him how hard I work, how reliable I am. I'm sorry, Jazz, I can't do that. There you go again. Sorry. I wish there was something I could do. I, I just told you what you can do, but you don't want to do well, it, do you? Let's keep things civilised, shall we? You and Tom Archie are just the same. Oh, chummy, smiling, pretending to be my mate. I am your mate. Then you go ahead and drop me in steady it. Steady on. Well, I'll tell you something, pal. With friends like you, I don't need enemies. Oh, did I tell you? I was having a quick half in the bull and I was telling Kenton about these Angus's carving and we got talking and I said, on the off chance, might he be interested in stocking some of our beef burgers? <laughs> and he said yes. He wants to put them on as a special. Right. Bridge Farm Angus beef burgers. Lovely. 
Did you hear a word of that, Pat? Um, buggers. You have to stop thinking about Tom. Oh. And how do you suggest I do that? It may not be as serious as you think. <laughs> Tony, she's left him. You left me once, remember, when we were going through a rough patch. 1979. We managed to patch things up, didn't we? But we had the children. Even so, she'll be home soon, you'll see. I'm not so sure. Oh. Pat, just a thought. But maybe I could help. Take him out for a drink? Get him to talk? Maybe. No, no, I, I was thinking more along the lines of calling Natasha myself. Tony. What do you think? I think you're lovely for thinking of it. It might help. Tom's a grown man. We mustn't interfere. All we can do is sit back and watch and be around to pick up the pieces. Joe. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I want to sleep. No, Joe. <laughs> just, just rest in me eyes. <laughs> Brought you a cup of tea, if you're interested. Oh, 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 oh. Why, why have you ever known me not interested in a cup of tea? And a chocolate digestive. Oh, boy, I feel like a king. <laughs> ah, uh, sugar in here? What do you think? Ah. Oh, oh. will you look at the colour on that, eh? Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah sit, sit down, Terry, look. Drink your tea with me. <sighs> Oh, that's better. I just had Mia on the phone. Oh, where was she? Not bad, actually. It sounded quite chirpy. When's she coming back home? She's not sure exactly. She thinks she might stay a bit longer with Andrew and Jake. It's not a bad idea, probably, for her and William to have a bit of a breather. How did he seem to you when he came to pick Poppy up? Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> did Poppy show you that gold star she got for her son? <laughs> did she show me? <laughs> Only 20 times. <laughs> William said, well done. I don't know, I thought his mind was somewhere else. Oh, stop your worrying, girl. You're as bad as my Susan for fretting. Am I? Oh, you should have heard the way she used to go on about her ready and help. <laughs> yeah, and my mum was the same about me, and my nan the same about my mum. Oh, your nan was a character. <laughs> and half. Do you know, she was only 62 when she passed. Yeah, that's nothing, eh? Oh, God rest her soul. And here's me now, 65. <laughs> How did that happen? Better than the alternative. <laughs> Kids home from school. Oh, hello, yeah. hello Edward. <laughs> and I said to George, if it stayed fun, we could have a bit of a kick about. Well, they're both upstairs making a start on their own work. Ah, well, I'll pop up and fetch him. Shame to waste this lovely afternoon, isn't it? Edward. Yes, Mum. I'm sorry to hear about you and Jazza earlier. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about that. It don't sound like Jazza losing his rag. Especially with you. I always thought you two were such good mates. Yeah, well, you know. You don't want to go falling out with your friends, darling. Friends don't pay the bills, Mum. <sighs> now I'm going to start worrying about him and Jazza. Oh, Joe. I don't see you men pulling your hair out the way we do. Yeah, well, we don't have to, do we, Clary? Because you women does it for us. I yeah. didn't sleep a wink last night for fretting about William. And when I weren't fretting about him, I was worrying about Mia. I kept going round in circles, getting nowhere. That poor little family. Like a boat adrift without their mother. Oh, they'll meet their way. I hope so, Joe. But how? They've got you. That's how. Oh, Joe. They've lost their lovely mum. They've a hard road to travel, but... But you're a rock to us all. <laughs> and a blessing. Hello? Morning, Will. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I'm wondering 
imagine if you'd be at home at dinner time. Well, I ain't got any plans to be anywhere else. Okay, if I drop round about half past one. Well, bring sandwiches, shall I, for both of us? Or is this about me, here? Eh? We'll talk later, all right? Sorry, I've got to dash. Tra. Almost came to fisticuffs, according to Neil. What was he doing there? Oh, Shula co-opted him onto the committee, actually. But you don't know anything about art. He's extremely multi-talented. And a pillar of the church, of course. And I think she was wanting his calm voice of reason. There's some people on that committee don't know when to keep their mouths shut. I don't understand what all the lather's about. Well... They want to organise a piece of art for the church, but they were arguing about what. So they've decided to put it to a public ballot. And now they're arguing about what to put on the ballot paper. What are the choices? Well, there you have it. Neil reckons we could get someone to create a special Ambridge peel for the bells. What's that got to do with art? Music's art. It's not music, it's bells. Anyway, Lily Pargeter's boyfriend. Ooh, the one with the brown eyes. He reckons what they need is some modern stations of the cross. When she gets bored of him, I wouldn't mind having a go. And Linda Snell, well, she wants a pair of manicured hands washing a pair of filthy feet. <sighs> Lovely. There's some of those stuff as well, I believe. <laughs> Bert Fry wants to write a special poem. And get paid for it. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> and Kate... Maddie Carney, Aldridge as was, wants them to uh, commission a piece of performance art on the theme of sustainability in a doomed world. Hmm. You going to come up with any suggestions? I got better things to do than think about art. You're probably right. Neil said it all got a bit aerated. Everyone shouting and Shula doing her best to referee them all. Then Jill Archer's friend, Leonard, gets up and walks out on the lot of them. You're kidding me. Ah, true as I'm standing here. He walked out? Oh, pass us a couple of cream of tomatoes, will you? Of course. They come back five minutes later. There you go. Oh, Turned out he'd been paying a visit to the little boys' room. But it gave all of them a bit of a shock. And Neil says the meeting sort of fizzled out after that and they didn't decide on anything. Oh, Fallon, sorry, love. We're shut until ten for stop taking. Oh, well, I'm only after a bag of flour. Oh, OK. Uh, would you mind leaving the money by the till? Thanks. We was just talking about the art shenanigans. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard about that. Well, I'm going to vote for Neil's idea. I thought you said that wasn't art. Blood's thicker than water, though. It's not your blood. I'm leaving one pound fifty, Susan. Oh, what about your change? Oh, keeping it in the charity box. All oh, right, you are. Blood or no blood? Family first. Oh, yeah, and on the subject of family, Tracy, my Christopher is a bit upset about the cricket. I'm not surprised. We nearly lost. He wasn't happy with the way you tried to distract their batsman. Paul, was it? And I hear you had a go at Tom Archer. He was useless. Dropped a simple catch. I'm not surprised that new wife of his is up and gone. Oh, we don't know that's the case. Oh, her car's been gone for days and no one's clapped eyes on her. Bev, sorry, I got a bit held up. No problem. Been nice having two minutes out here in the sun. You lost some weight? Well, I don't think so. Only look, how are you sleeping? Getting your eight hours? I'm doing fine, thanks. Eating properly? Yes. Mm. I'm in cheese sarnies for dinner, that suit you? Thank you. And I brought a piece of fruit cake Mia made at mine on Sunday. Oh, you've seen her? Yes. Well, how is she? Only she ain't picking up my calls. I won't lie to you, Will. She's not happy with you. No. There's no easy way of telling you this, love. So I'm going to come out with it straight. I've come to collect her stuff. Well, she'll be staying a bit longer at Andrews, then. Yeah. Well, why didn't she come herself? Oh, she don't want to see you right now, darling. Or well, she could have sent Andrew. Will? He's that angry with you. I'm not sure he'd be responsible for what he might do. Come on. Get the arse open, shall we, and have our sandwiches. Is Jazza asleep, do you think? What? Over there, his head on his arms. Oh. Well, he's not doing the job he's being paid for, that's for sure. <sighs> he's been yawning all day. Said him and Jim were on the computer half the night preparing his case against Tom. Oh. Want me to wake him up? No, thanks. Truth is, he's more used to me asleep when he's awake. <laughs> 
I don't know why you don't just give him his cards. I'm working up to it. I know I've got to. I know I have. He's costing me money, but he's one of my best friends. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Cake! Honey cake. Well, you've come to the right place. And you wouldn't have a candle, would you, for Clary to blow out? She never said it was a birthday. Oh, it was the weekend. Only this is the first time we've been on shift together since then. So I, I thought I'd make a little thing of it. So what cake do you want? Oh, uh, all the red velvet looks nice. Is that mascarpone on top? It is, and it's delicious. Oh, I'll have a couple of slices of that then, please. Okay. Here, you'll never guess what I've just heard from Pat. What? She had it from Linda Snell, who mentioned it when she came in the shop for some cheese. What? There's been another bit of bunting. A little string of pence. Where? By the duck pond, draped around the shrubs. I mean, how did anyone do that without being seen? Here you go, Susan, 6.50. Um, and you can have the candle on the house. Oh, thank you. Contactless. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Top very much. So who do you think it is, Rayleigh? Really? It's a mystery. There you go, Susan. Ta. You should get on the job, Harrison. Might earn yourself a commendation. Anyway, nice to see you. And you. Bye, then. That's all me. Sure did. <laughs> Call yourself a policeman. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to see if I can catch Tracy. Well, you don't think she stole the bunting? No, it's about the match. She needs a bit of a talking to. So are you taking all this? She asked me to bring the lot. Even her winter stuff? She wants it all. Well, I suppose there might be a cold snap. Maybe. Here, let me help you. Think I'm more or less there, Will. Well, are you taking this? Well, yes. I remember buying it. You and Nick gave it to her for her tenth birthday. Oh, she told you? More than once. It's her favourite scarf. Yeah, she was so quiet that day. We didn't know what was wrong. And then at bedtime, she told Nick she was sad because she was never going to be in single figures again. How could you say them things to her, Will? <sighs> I've been asking myself the same question. Telling her Nick would be disappointed in her. Oh, I didn't mean it, Bev. I let my emotions run away with me. The words were out before I knew it. Oh, I wish I could turn the clock back. We've all wished that sometime or another... Problem is, the words are out there now and Mia can't forget them. No. Right. That's a wardrobe done and the chest of drawers. And she's asked for her photos. From the walls? Yeah. She's framed them up beautifully, hasn't she? Yeah, she got all the frames from charity shops. The room's going to look so bare when she comes back. She says she's not coming back. What? Never. That's what she's saying at the moment. I'm afraid she don't even want to visit. Well, she don't mean it, does she? Give her some time. Well, I can't lose her, Bev. I think you already have, darling. Well, you can't carry on this way, living on your nerves. I'm doing all right. I'm managing. You've only got to look at the state of this house. She always gets a bit messy in the middle of the week. Couldn't help but notice your fridge is empty. Look, me and Poppy are going to the supermarket after I pick her up from school. I could help if you like. Give it a bit of a vow. I don't need your help, thanks. It'd but be no trouble. I told you I'm fine. You can't keep pushing people away, love. I don't mean to be rude, Bev. I told you I'm fine. And that's the truth. I won't be so fine if I lose my job. So, uh, let's get these photos down and I can get back to work. Nice day for it. Oh, hello. Saving money, cheaper than the tumble dryer. Yeah. And it never stops the washing. Not when you've got kids. No, I'm sure. <sighs> there. What did you want? Well, if you've got a minute, I wondered if we could have a chat about the match last Sunday. Yeah. We done okay, thanks to me. You're lucky to have me on the team. Ah, right, yeah, you did all right. All right? I saved us from humiliation and disaster. But listen, Tracy, you shouldn't have talked to Tom the way you did. Oh, he'll get over it. Fact is, we won. No, I mean, it. you've got to keep everyone on side. There's a lot more to it than winning. What? Did you see the look on Damo's face? We thrashed Darrington Harrison and the captain was not happy. Even so, we're a team. Tracy. Alice will be well chuffed, eh? She used to go out with Damo, didn't she? Never mind about Alice's love life. I want you to take this on board. 
I was all for you being Vice Captain Tracy. It's an important role, but it's as much about motivating the team as it is about scoring runs. Rubbish. It's getting the runs that wins the game, and it's winning the game that motivates the team. Well, I... All the others got to do is copy what I do, and they'll be fine. I'm um, wondering if your, your talents might be put to better use elsewhere. What? You're going to sack me, then? Or put me on the tees? No, uh... Hey, your face! Bottom line, love, we won. And you've got me to thank for that. There you go. That's the last bag. I'm so sorry about this, Will. Oh, don't worry about it. I hate to see you unhappy. Save your sympathy, Bev, for someone who needs it. Well, give my love to Poppy, will you? Yeah, of course. And don't forget to tell her she can see Mia and Jake at mine whenever she likes. Well, the two of them are very welcome here. Give them my love, too. How's Poppy coping with everything? Yeah, she's OK. More than OK. Doing ever so well at school. Got a gold star on Monday for good work. Uh, and then another yesterday for excellent behaviour. Missing Mia, I expect. Yeah, she's getting on with things. We both are. I can't tell you how sorry I am this is happening. My Nick loved the socks off you. You know that, don't you? Well, I felt the same about her. She said to me once, if anything happened to you, she didn't know if she'd be able to carry on. Yeah. Well, sometimes you've got no choice. You do understand, though. My priority has to be the children, Mia and Jake, and Poppy. What? Are you planning on taking her away and all? I didn't say that, love. So what are you saying, then, exactly? I'm on your side, Will. You've got to believe that. There's a but coming, though, isn't there? I don't want to interfere. But? But if it seems to me that Poppy's starting to suffer in any way... What do you mean, suffer? I'm just saying I can't stand back and watch. If I think there's a problem, I will be back. So... The game plan, Jazza. Always good to have a game plan. Is it? You leave the talking to me. Absolutely, Jim. Uh, I have a strategy. A strategy, game plan. I'm loving all this. And I need you to trust me. You know what you're doing, boss. I wouldn't say that's entirely accurate. But my approach will only work if you allow me to steer the direction of flow. Direction of flow? Better and better. My lips are zipped. Morning, Tom. Yes, morning. Morning, Jazza. Morning. You're very punctual. Well, this is a business meeting, Tom. I've never known Jazza be on time for anything. I don't think that's fair. Jazza. Sorry. Great. Well, come on in. All right, take a seat on the sofa and I'll get the coffee. You got any biscuits? I wonder if it might be better if we sit at the table. <laughs> Of course. So, uh, how do you take your coffee, Jim? Uh, thank you, but business first, then coffee, perhaps. As you like. Uh, now, as you know, Tom, I'm not a lawyer by trade, but Jazza has asked me to represent him in the matter of his claim for unfair dismissal. OK. Will your legal representative be joining us? Uh, it's just me. I thought this was an informal meeting. Uh. The field of employment law, as I'm sure you're aware, Tom, is extremely complex. I'm not sure informality is an option. Can I just say something? Yes? I could really murder that coffee. Ooh. Do you want some more coffee? Oh, hi, Uncle Kenton. <clears throat> Do you want some? Hmm? No, thanks. You've heard about the mess up on Sunday. Uh, yeah, yeah, I spoke to your mum. <sighs> Good. So I don't have to tell you how embarrassing it was, and that I made a loss. Mm. Yeah. What was the problem, do you think? Who knows? Advertising? Pricing? I know for sure I can't blame the product. But, like Mum says, all I can do is learn and move on. Yeah, well... Hi, Kenton. I... Thought oh. I saw your car out there. Were you OK, Mum? Yes. Yes. Good to see you, Kenton. Yeah, you too. Well, I'm, uh, I'm just checking up on you, and then I'm off to see Glenn. So, as I've already pointed out, 
Constructive dismissal is deemed to have occurred when an employer commits a serious breach of a fundamental term of an employee's employment contract. Yes, Jim, thanks. I've got that. A breach that cuts to the heart of the contract and places the employee in a situation where they can consider they are no longer bound by the contract. Too late. Uh, sorry. sorry. The employer in such cases has violated the terms of trust and confidence implied by the contract. And the employee is placed in a situation where they feel the trust between them and the employer no longer exists. I offered you another job, Jazza. Aye, but... Can I remind you, Tom, for the purposes of this meeting, please negotiate with me. Sure, I'll, uh... Yep, go on, Jim. So, a crucial point as far as we are concerned is that Jazza is a pig specialist. And as we've already said, your offer of alternative employment... Uh, Packing lettuces at an implied reduced rate of pay satisfies every legal criterion needed to establish constructive dismissal. How much does he want? I knew we're talking. Feel free to mention a figure. A thousand? Oh, a thousand quid. An employment tribunal, as you will be aware, could and very likely would award Jazza an amount up to an equivalent sum of his annual salary. But they take overtime in the account. Two thousand. Furthermore, the court would almost certainly be minded to award Mr McCreary's costs against Bridge Farm. Good, Jim. Jazza. Sorry. Which, when added to your own costs, would amount to a not inconsiderable sum. Three thousand. Jim. Jazza. Uh, Sorry. You could be looking at a total sum well into five figures. Four thousand. Done. (laughs) Pleasure doing business with you. Hello, you two. Oh, hi. Oh, you finished then. That was short and sweet. Glenn humoured me for a bit, but he has the VAT totally under control. I wasn't necessary. Kenton, believe me, you're always necessary. <laughs> well, not true, but thanks. Right. i better get these into some water. I'll see you soon, Kenton. Yeah, bye. Uh, what's wrong? That was an extremely depressing 20 minutes. With Glenn? To put it mildly. I don't want to be mean, Freddy, but no more last-minute bright ideas like Sunday, yeah? I no, mean... You I... made the place look amateurish. Sitting there behind a table, publicity you designed yourself. No, I... Has Glenn been on about me wasting money? No, no. The, the loss you made doesn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Even without your help, Lower Loxley is sliding off the map. What do you mean? The profit margins are virtually non-existent. Even the takings in the orangery are down since they took Lower Loxley fizz off the menu. Jolene, I've got to get back. Um, You need to think things through, Freddy. Now, this is a big enterprise. You can't treat it like, I don't know, like, like, like the village fate. No. No, I can see that. I don't mean to be harsh. I'd rather you said it. I've I've been through a lot worse. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's just now, with Glenn looking at the books... uh, Well, I don't really see how this place is going to survive. Payment at the end of the week suit you, Tom? Sure. You've got my bank details, haven't you? Yes. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. I'm oh, pleased you're so I happy. Don't know a lot of what it takes to get along. For myself, I would have held out for more. I almost felt sorry for him in there. First he loses his wife. His and then... wife? Oh, what does she's run off? Ah, oh, if I'd known, I might have been a little gentler. You were awesome in there, Mr Lloyd. You were a star. One did one's best, Mr McCreary. How do you do it? Are they words? So completely boring. Expert stuff. Not so much an expert, more a waffler. What I didn't know, I made up. All skills I perfected during my years in the academy. Might we be in time for a glass at the bull, do you think? We can do better than that. You go home and sort out the eats and I'll provide the drinks. Single malt suit you. Or perhaps a bottle of red. I'll get both. The settlement we reach hardly merits such extravagance. I beg to disagree with my learned friend. Oh, it's Fallon, do you mind? Not at all. Hello, Fallon. You've been missing me. Um, sort of. Um, but I- I'm wondering, would you have time to drop in? There's something I need to talk to you about. Great. There's something I want to talk to you about, I know. 
from Kenton? Yes? What you said? Were you serious? Uh, about things being that bad? Freddy, look, the simple truth is, without an alcohol licence, the business here, it's unsustainable. So why aren't we getting a new licence? <sighs> I mean, I understand why we lost it originally, but I thought that was only temporary. Yes, it was. So? I'd love to chat, but Jolene needs me oh, back oh, at the pub. Uncle Kenton, please, like I said, I've been through a lot worse. I know. I want to help the business. Really, I do. I love this place. Why aren't we applying for a new licence? Get in the car. Come here, woman. A a hug. What? <laughs> it's a beautiful oh. day of the day. Put me down, Jezzer. Ah, there's nobody here to see. Oh, have you been at the bottle? Ah, not yet, but soon. I promise. <laughs> well, before you do, um, there's something that I, I need to talk to you about. Well, something I want to talk to you about as well. Heads or tails? What? Well, call it. Uh, heads. Ha! Tails, I get first dibs. Okay. But before I say anything, you've got to promise you're not going to take anything I say personally. Um, okay. I just want to say, Fallon, you're on a lovely operation here. Thank you. Your bread pudding's second to none. Thank you. But working here, it's no job for somebody like me. Is it not? So, well, if you don't mind. Not at all. <laughs> Thanks for your understanding. <laughs> You're more of an outdoors person. I'm a managerial person. Managerial? Oh, I've enjoyed my time with you, but I can't lie, it doesn't stimulate the mind. Okay. See, I've come into a bit of money and I want to concentrate on developing my career. I'll work my week's notice, of course. Uh, no need, Jazzo. I don't want to leave you in the luck. Uh, no, I'll manage. That's very understanding of you, Fallon. Well, you need to follow your true path. Uh, I do, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, you're a true pal. Oh, yeah, you, you too. So, your turn. My turn? Well, what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, do you know, it's it's gone right out of my head. I, how about a slice of bread pudding? <laughs> the solicitor told Mum not to let me come home. Well, he wasn't quite that blunt, but he did advise her that she find somewhere else for you to live. And then Lower Loxley could serve alcohol. Oh. Well, your mother refused to even consider it. I didn't know. All she cared about, I mean, the only thing she thought about, day and night, was getting you out of there and safely back <sighs> home. I've been so stupid. I should have realised. Well, it's been a worry to your mum and to everyone. They all know. Of course they do. Oh, God, they must think I'm rubbish. And then I go and try and run some stupid enterprise that was always going to fail. Why didn't Glenn just say no? Well... He did, didn't he? Oh, and Mum said to let me do it. Oh! They want to support you, Freddie. I thought it was just some local authority mess up. That, you know, when they got their act together... How could I be so dense? Be honest with me, Kenton. When you said unsustainable, what did you mean? W what's the future for Lower Loxley? If things carry on as they are, I'm not sure how much longer your mother will be able to keep it going. I'm talking about the business, you understand, not the house. Without the business, there is no house. How long until we go bankrupt? A year, perhaps. <gasps> Eighteen months. The finances are really that bad. Well, things are not looking good, mate. And my stupid secret tours thing just lost us even more money. Look, in the scheme of things, that hardly registers. So we'll lose the business and then the house. We'll lose our home. And it's all going to be down to me. Hey, hey, you mustn't beat yourself up about it. Why not, though? There's only one person to blame. Me. It's all my fault. Elizabeth. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? Uh, not bad, thanks. Uh, yourself? Yes, I'm fine. Um, we've been having a bit of a clear-out, and I found some books the children enjoyed when they were little. 
I wondered if Poppy might be interested. Oh, she does love books. Ah, is that the bear hunt one? Has she got it already? Uh, no, uh, she brought it home from school a couple of weeks back. Uh, oh, she'd be thrilled to bits to have a copy of her own. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're more than welcome. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to call round to see you. You're sorry? After Nick died, I intended to drop in, but... but you sent flowers. <laughs> flowers. Oh, it was a kind gesture. I appreciated it. And you've had some ups and downs yourself the past year. It's no excuse. I should have called in person. Has it been over a year now, hasn't it? Mm. Coming up 15 months. Mm. It's still very raw, then. Hmm. Well, folks said it would get easier once the first year was done. But... Mm. Not what I found. No. Well. Thank you for the books, Elizabeth. Poppy's going to be so grateful. I'd ask you to come in for a cup of tea. Oh, that would be very nice. Only I ain't tidied up for a few days. I'm happy to wash up my own teacup. It would be nice to have a chat. OK. Come in. I saw Freddy in the village shop just now. How did he seem? He was buying industrial quantities of chocolate. Mm. You heard about Sunday, I suppose? Yes, poor boy. Elizabeth says he's taking it hard. Does she have any theories why it went so badly? He's very loyal, but... I imagine he didn't think it through. Ah. Oh. She says the worst of it was how excited he was to show off the house. He loves the place and he wanted to share it. Of course. Yes. Leonard went up to the attic, you know, with Freddy. He was very impressed by some of the pictures they have stored up there. Apparently there are quite a few. Oh, I didn't know that. I think Nigel had collected them. Leonard thought they were beautiful. Well, he should know. Yes, he's very knowledgeable. Right, I'll leave these cups to drain while I put on some lipstick. Is Leonard joining us for lunch at the ball? Only I'd like to persuade him to reconsider his resignation from the art committee. Well, You've no he's... idea, Mum. He makes such a difference. That's lovely, of course, It's but... like herding cats, all spitting like Hilda. Oh, dear. Yes, he's the only calm voice of reason I've got. What about Neil Carter? Yes, he's calm too. I'm very glad he's there. But he doesn't have Leonard's know-how. We need him. I'm afraid you might have to manage without him, though, Shula. Oh, dear. I could tell he wasn't happy the other night. I don't think it's that night specifically. More that he generally feels a fraud. A fraud? Oh, hi, Shula. Oh, hi. Um, well, it's an Ambridge project and he lives in Borchester. You look cheerful, David. Oh, well, you know, it's always good to escape from the books. Uh, Rosie's coming round this evening, so I'm off to Bridge Farm for some organic yoghurt. Is there anything you want, Mum? Perhaps a piece of Borsetshire Blue. You got it. We're just off for lunch at the ball, if you're interested. Yes, why don't you and Ruth join us? What, and put money in Kenton's pocket that won't find its way into my bank account? Oh, David, please, don't start all that again. No, don't worry, Mum, not your problem. He's like a broken record. I can understand him being fed up. Shula, there's fed up and there's obsessed. <sighs> He's forever sniping and bickering. He doesn't seem to understand that Kenton's had a massive VAT bill to pay this week and apparently Jolene's had some photographs done for publicity and they're not cheap. Well, on balance, Mum, I think I'm on David's side. He'll get his money eventually. Yeah, I'm sure he will. But you have to admit, it's been a long time coming. There's always been a good reason, though. Really? Well, if I were David, I'd want my money back, too. I know. But I do so hate all this bad feeling. Would you like that tea now? Will? Sorry. Oh, it's looking good in here. Oh, it's the getting started that's the problem. Um, I've finished the dishes. I feel terrible letting you help like this. Oh, I offered, didn't I? Um, can I make you a cup of tea? Well, I think I'd rather just press on. Now I've finally made a start. Well, why don't you sit down for a minute, though? I could do with a break. Yeah? Oh, OK, then. <laughs> good. Oh, I don't often do this these days. Oh, I keep busy. Yeah. Well, Nick would be so cross with how I've been letting the place go. She always liked things to be just so. I remember I said to her once that... Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't go on. It's nice to hear you talk about her. 
There's not many would agree with you. At first, they was happy to listen to me go on, but now, if I mention her name, most folks look away and try to change the subject. Because she's died, it doesn't mean she's not here. That's exactly right. That's how I feel. Sometimes, don't laugh. I even catch myself talking to her. No, of course. Not out loud. Well, at least not often. <laughs> but up here in my head. Well, even after all this time, I still sometimes talk to Nigel. Mm. But they don't talk back to us, do they? No. I'm ashamed to say it, but there's been times I've been that angry at her for going and leaving me to sort it all out. That's normal. You reckon? According to my therapist. You've got a therapist? I've not been seeing her long, just a few months. I was in a terrible state. I didn't care about anything, the house, the business, nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. All I could think about was Freddie and what was happening to him and that it was my fault he got caught up in the drugs and all these thoughts, they were, they were going round and round. In the end, I went to the GP and she sent me for counselling. Well, it's been a difficult time for you. The thing is, Will, I thought it was all Freddie... But the therapist helped me see I was actually still grieving for Nigel. I'd never given myself time to mourn him properly. What with being mum and dad to the children, superwoman at work. I'm sorry, I didn't come here to talk about myself. Oh, I don't mind. It makes me feel less on my own. One minute, your life's set on a path and you're planning what you'll do at the weekend and mm. the next... Oh, until it's happened to you, how can anyone understand? You keep going the best way you can, one foot in front of the other. And then it hits you again like a truck. That's exactly it. But the gaps in between, Will, they do get longer. <laughs> don't feel like it. Maybe not at the moment. I don't want to forget her, though. You won't. You loved her. Yeah, I did. And that never goes away. I'm not terribly keen on burgers. They're 100% Tony's Angus beef. Are they good? They are beyond good. <laughs> then I think I'd better give them a go. I think I'll stick to my usual plowman's thank you, Kenton. OK, all right you are. Are you two going to be all right out here? Oh, it's a beautiful day. And it's so lovely to be in the open air. Why don't I reserve a table for you indoors in case you change your mind? It can get chilly. Would that be all right? I'm the boss, you're my mum. <laughs> of course it's all right. Thank you, that would be lovely. Now, Jim's birthday bath. His tribute night, according to Alistair. It sounds a splendid idea, I'm sure he'll love it. Yeah, it'll be fun, I think, if we can make it happen. Who have you got coming? Well, we're still working on it, but I've spoken to Dan and to Jim's piano teacher. Oh, and Joe Grundy, they've all said yes. And I know Alistair's got his sister Fiona on board, so... Oh, my goodness, Shula. What? What's that? Up there in the hanging basket. Oh, yes. Are my eyes playing tricks? Now, Poppy won't recognise the house when she gets in from school. And I hope she enjoys the books. Well, I know she will. Thank you again, Elizabeth. I'm really grateful. It's truly been my pleasure. And thank you, um, you know, for the chat and that. It was nice talking to someone who knows what it's like. You're not on your own. If you ever want to drop in for a cup of tea... Uh, that's kind, but... Um... It's a genuine offer, Will. I'd always be pleased to see you. It can help to talk. Except all the talking in the world's never going to bring Nick back. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, go ahead, take it. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's only my mum. She can leave a message. Any road. Uh, best get back to work, I suppose. Uh, thanks again. Um, look... Tell me to mind my own business, but on the way here this morning, I had an appointment at the surgery. I picked up these leaflets about mental health. Mm. Uh, look, I don't want to be pushy or anything, but there's things for bereavement. You know, it's help for children, all sorts, really. I, I just... Well, it might be worth a look. That's very thoughtful. So I'll leave it here. Thank you. And if you ever do feel like dropping round, I'd be very pleased to see you. Mm. Bye. Bye. Bunting sets the bottles off beautifully, Kenton. Oh, thank you, Mum. It looks splendid outside, too. 
Do you know, I feel ridiculously proud that our humble establishment has been chosen by the mystery bunting man. Could be a woman. Yeah, maybe we should all don deer stalkers and magnifying glasses. Oh, yes. <laughs> hello, all. Elizabeth, hello, darling. I was passing and I saw Sheila's car. David's on his way in, too. He's walking over the green. All my children together. What a treat. <laughs> Sheila, are you eating a burger? Mm. And chips. Very delicious they are, too. <laughs> Kent, have you no shame? Are you talking to me, Dave? Bridge Farm Beef Burger Specials. I've just been talking to Tony. Uh, yeah? Is there a problem? Oh, why not sit down, David, and it's have a drink? It's not then? enough for you to hold out on your debt. You've got to go one further and support one of my competitors. I'm still selling your beef on Sundays, and your steak is on the menu every day. It's not on the special menu, Shh, though, is it? Calm down. I'm struggling to see the problem here, Dave. Oh, don't play the innocent. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I think I'd better take this. I simply cannot believe... Hey, calm down. Calm down! Please, you're making a fool of yourself. Please stop arguing. David, why don't I get you a drink? Whatever happened to family loyalty? Huh? Tony is family, and I am running a business here. Yes, Kenton, and so am I. And it would help my business if my brother paid up on his long overdue debt. You will get your money. When? It's not as if you need it. Please stop. What? Both of you. In case you haven't noticed, you inherited the farm. Well, I didn't see you slogging for three years at Agricultural College for the good of the family. (laughs) Oh, here we go. Let's hear the violins for St David. I've had it with you. A real brother would have paid me back long ago. Well, that's it. I'm done. I have no brother. Oh, Oh, come on. You don't mean that. I want my money. And until I get it, yes, I do mean that. David, come back. Oh, goodness sake. Elizabeth, what's wrong? Um, that was Camilla on the phone, Nigel's sister. What did she want? She, She called to tell me that Fred has been in touch with her. Apparently he's asked, he wants to go and live with her. Do you actually want to send Mum spiralling back down? Of course not. Because that's what you've done. You know I slept in her room last night. Why? Oh, come on, Freddie. She's already being treated for depression. I didn't want to leave her on her own. You don't think she'd harm herself? Well, for what it's worth, no. But I wanted to be sure. And I knew she wouldn't sleep, and she didn't. Do you have any idea what this is doing to her, you walking out? I'm not walking out. All the time you were away, the only thing she thought about, the only thing she lived for, was you coming home. And now you're moving away. And she has to hear it from Aunt Camilla. I didn't expect Aunt Camilla to call her, especially not the minute she'd put the phone down on me. Ross is with her right now. She can't understand what she's done wrong. I keep telling her she's done nothing wrong. But if I don't leave, she'll never get a new licence. she's not interested in the alcohol licence, you idiot! She's interested in you. The licence doesn't matter. You know it matters. The only thing that matters here is Mum. And the only thing that matters to Mum is that you're here at home so she can see you and look after you. Leave it, Lily. It's my decision. But Mum is so fragile. Do you think I don't know that? And that's my fault too. She'd be better off without me. You won't fix anything by leaving. In the short term, maybe. Oh, Freddie. But really, though, Aunt Camilla, she's a cow. Yeah. You remember what you used to call her when we were little? Donkey. Please, Freddie, please think again. Lily, I have thought, and I've thought again. I've done nothing but think. It's the right thing for me to do. I've got to go. You are so selfish, Freddie. Yes, you're right, I am. And you're a coward. Yep, I'm a coward. And who do you think is going to be left to pick up the pieces? I can't stay here. Get the bloody licence. It's more than just the licence. What do you mean? I can't explain. Try me. Look, and I can't. Freddie, are you walking out on me? Hello, Will Grundy can't answer your call right now. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. William, it's Mum again. I'm that worried about you, love. How are you managing? How's Poppy? Have you heard from Mia? I wish you'd answer my calls. 
Any road, I'll be dropping round yours at dinner time with a casserole. Okay. Tony, if Tom had gone to court, it would have been a lot worse. If it had gone to court, Jazza would have had to prove his case. I don't know what Tom was thinking of. Mm, he has got a few other things on his mind at the moment. Even so, Pad... You... Jazza, oh. he's coming in. Please don't mention Jazza. So, so, this thing between Kenton and David's not... Re oh, hello, love. How's your morning been? Not too bad. Soup? Thanks. Uh, we were just talking about the fallout yesterday and the ball between Kenton and Dave. Yeah, yeah, Johnny mentioned something about it. Dare say it's halfway round the county by now. How are you today? Yeah, well, not great, to be honest. The photos arrived this morning. Photos? The wedding photos. The... She looked so happy. She was happy. Oh, I thought so at the time. It was a great day. She said it was the happiest day of her life. And I'm sure she meant it. But how can you be sure, Mum? Maybe she was just pretending. You're here? Yeah, well, I got your message. Edward so... drove me over so I could bring you this. Oh, well, there's no need, Mum. It's just a bit of shin beef and some veg. Mm, well, it smells great. No trouble to make a bit extra for you and Poppy. Thank you. Well, I love your stew, and so does she. Well, there you are then. Mm. So, uh, can you invite me in? Uh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Uh, come on inside. Only I brought me rubber gloves and some furniture polish, because I reckoned it might be difficult for you to have kept up with the... Oh, my word, William. <laughs> Place looks lovely. Yeah, not too bad, I suppose. You've had time to do all this, and your job, at, and look after Poppy. Well, who needs sleep, anyway? <laughs> Good on you, son. Take the casserole through to the kitchen, shall we? Uh, yeah, I'll put the kettle on. We can have a nice cup of tea. We've oh, even got flowers on the windowsill. Yeah, Poppy picked them. And what's that? Oh, yeah, she got a Star of the Week certificate from school. My goodness, isn't that wonderful? Mm. Oh, there's me being worrying me head off. And all the time you've been doing fine. Mia's going to be so impressed when she gets back home. Well, actually, Mum... Uh... I'm not sure she's going to be coming back here. What? Well, I should have told you before, probably, only... I suppose I thought she might change her mind, but... Well, she's decided to stay at Andrews. What? Forever? Possibly. Well, that's why neither of you ain't been answering my phone calls. Well, I can't speak for her, but... Oh, William... Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Well, I won't pretend I've been happy about it. But she's at a difficult age, Mum. And the more I think about it, the more I think it's maybe for the best. But she was finding it hard here. And it'll be nice for her to have Ellie to talk to. Mandrew's partner? Hmm. Well, and it's one less mouth for me to feed. Well, how's Poppy taking it? Oh, no problem. Oh, she's absolutely fine. Oh, she'll still see Mia and Jake at Bev's house. Well, she told me last night that she's enjoying having me to herself. She said that? Uh, and then she said she loved me. Oh, bless her. Mm. I wouldn't have had it this way, Mum. But I truly think it's for the best. It means I can concentrate on my job and being the very best dad to Poppy. You. Yeah. Where'd you get the tennis ball? It's just on the ground outside. So, when you said it was more than a license. Can we just talk about something else, please? When did we stop talking to each other, Freddie? Please stop and talk to me. You've never told me what it was like in there. I don't have any idea, not really. Freddie, talk to me. Freddie! <laughs> It was horrible. Yeah, the, the people, they were... Yes? You know, there was this big guy. Well, there's a few of them, actually. They were up to all sorts in there. Ran the place. They had a nickname for everyone. Mine was Posh Boy. 
It was never going to be anything else, was it? No. Everyone was scared of them. Even some of the officers. What did they do to you? Mostly, I just stayed out of their way. And I didn't even come out myself sometimes. It was ages before I got the courage up to go anywhere. The canteen or the you know, classroom. And when I did, no one would talk to me or sit next to me. How did you get through it? <laughs> you just do. You know, that's what they say, don't they? Just keep your head down. Anyway, one day in the canteen, I'm sat at the end of a table on my own, as usual, and this boy comes and sits opposite me. I didn't look at him at first. I thought it was a wind-up. He didn't say anything. Just ate his meal, cleared away. And the next day, he was back again. On the third day, he told me his name was Billy. Was he... D did you like him? Well, never really got to know him. I wish... Oh, Freddy. Yeah. I wish I had. But you became friends? Not exactly friends. More just two people who sit next to each other in the canteen. He was so small and skinny. We talked about nothing much. <laughs> I talked about you, actually. Oh, thanks. No, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't talk to anyone else about you. Right. But they did not like him. <laughs> he was an even easier target than I was. So he got roughed up pretty badly. He was in the healthcare wing for a couple of days and then he came back. But he didn't sit next to you in the canteen. He tried to. But I told him to go away. Sorry. Freddie, please don't go. Freddie! She's emailed once or twice about Bridge Fresh, but only about Bridge Fresh. Yeah, we've got this meeting with the developer next week. So you'll see her then? No, maybe. Maybe not. She's not committing herself. But she skipped the newspaper interview, so I have to assume she won't be there. Well, not necessarily. Dad, I've got to be realistic. I'll probably have to buy her out of the app, run the business on my own. And my marriage is over. Oh, Tom. No, no point in fooling myself, Mum. Uh, do you mind if I uh, get back outside? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, of course. You go ahead. We can clear up in yeah, here. Well, thanks for the soup. It was great. Oh, Tony. How on earth could it have gone wrong so quickly? I can't bear oh, it. Come here, give us a hug. Oh. If only she'd talk to him. If only she'd pick up the phone. Oh, I hate to see you like this, Pearl. <laughs> it's Tom who matters, not me. It's both of you. It's breaking my heart watching what's happening. I wish... I wish there was something I could do. So, this friend of yours, Billy, what happened? Who says anything happened to him? Oh, stop pushing me away, Freddy. He tried to hang himself in his cell. Oh, no. Oh, Freddy, the... The rest of us weren't supposed to know, but, you know, something like that. Word gets round. Did he die? Word was the screws got to him in time, but I don't know for sure. All I do know is I never saw him again. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Sorry for me? I was the reason it happened. No, you weren't. I was. You don't want it to be true, but it is. Well, it, it might... You don't get it, do you, Lily? It might have happened anyway. No! Billy, Nolatando, Mum... Anyone who comes anywhere near me, I hurt them. I don't mean to, but I do it all the same. No, I Fred... can't carry on messing up other people's lives. And especially not Mum's. Her only chance of getting better and making a go of Lower Loxley is for me to get the hell out of here. I've made up my mind. I'm leaving. 